Hello, my name is Bob Sayre. I am one of the board members of the Eugene O'Neill Foundation Dow House and one of its many former presidents. I am also a retired attorney and that will be the focus of what I do today. That is to talk about the legal situations in the three so-called lost plays, uh, the uh, recklessness, the abortion and the web. Each one of these has a social situation which is peculiar to the time and the legal situation in each one which is also peculiar to the time. I'm going to focus on the legal situation and what would have to be done if these were to be written in the modern day. The first of the plays that I want to discuss is called Recklessness. It's about a married couple, the uh, great disparity of ages, a much older husband, much younger wife, uh, which is apparently an arranged marriage. It's an unhappy marriage. The wife is uh, carrying on an affair with the family chauffeur. The crux of it comes down to a divorce, and this was before such things as no-fault divorce. That means that there had to be grounds for someone to obtain a divorce in the courts. In this, the husband says he will give her grounds for such divorce. What isn't stated is there is no concern voiced on his part about any threat to his wealth, which apparently is considerable uh, in the play, uh, which means that most likely that there was some agreement to keep his assets out of uh, the marriage pile of assets. And that really is similar to, as today, even though we now have no-fault divorce, and essentially divorce can be granted for the asking. But uh, for a division of assets, uh, unless there is an agreement, uh, well, uh, then uh, if they're marriage assets, it will be divided. So I suspect that there was something in this, although it wasn't stated. Uh, and again, that's still, that's, that one's pretty much as today. The second play I'm going to discuss is the one called Abortion. Now, of course, abortion today is still a very hot social and legal issue. Uh, it's uh, both in the uh, judicial system and in the legislatures. The difference today is that in most states it's legal, uh, well ostensibly in all states it's legal, but in some states it's harder. And in this play it was not legal and the, uh, the crux of the situation was that a young woman was sent to have a, an illegal abortion and she died from it. The brother of the young woman then threatens and it actually does leave to go to tell the police about that situation on the young man who sent her to uh, the doctor to perform uh, the surgery. The, uh, obviously, today, it has to be totally rewritten for the modern situation. And as, as it was written, there would be no reason to go to the police because the abortion should have been legal and there shouldn't have been the drastic repercussions from it. So that would take a, a very big, very big rewriting in order to make it up to modern standards uh, in our society. The third play I'm going to discuss is called The Web. This play is about a killing. The killing takes place in what is obviously a slum and the uh, police come into this room where there had been a killing. They find a woman there, a dead man on the floor, and a gun uh, also in the room. They immediately accuse the woman who says that she said that she did not do it, that someone fired the gun through the window uh, at the man and threw the gun in, into the room. They looked at the window and said that no, the window's closed, and they did arrest her for the murder. Today, if that were written, 
there would have to be a lot of changes made in order to make it realistic. That is, first of all, we would have to have Miranda warnings. They did not have Miranda warnings then. That was 40 or 50 years before the Miranda case, and they never heard of such a thing. Today, without giving you Miranda warnings, it would be dis almost it would be dismissed almost automatically. The other items are all have to do with the uh, the forensic investigations. First of all, if there were a defense attorney, you would ask, "Did you take fingerprints from the gun? If you did, whose fingerprints were they? Were they hers?" Secondly. Did she show powder marks on her hands to show that she had fired the gun recently? Thirdly, I would ask about the window. Well, the window was closed, but was it locked? That is, could it have been opened and closed from the outside? I think all of those things together, if it was a good attorney, he could raise a reasonable doubt in the minds of the jurors, and she would have been dismissed, unlike what seems to be indicated in the play itself.